Welcome to this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic, which is taking us away from finishing part 3 about orbital assembly, but this pretty much has to get done. Now in the past couple of days there have already been videos put out on this topic. Even Thunderfoot, who did an excellent predictive video on the Vegas Loop in January, revisited this debacle over the weekend. But some of the things we're going to cover might still be news to you. As you are probably aware, this past week, Elon Musk's boring company finally opened their Vegas Loop project to reporters almost five months after the tweeted debut date. It was supposed to be opened in time for the CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, in January. Of course, that got cancelled, but that's really no excuse for being that far behind on such a small project. Even with the delay, to pretty much everyone's universal disappointment, what was supposed to be an underground high-speed shuttle system, whisking people from one end of the Las Vegas Convention Center to the other end back, turned out to be nothing more than a bunch of ordinary Tesla cars driving around in a circle. A very slow circle. A very slow, one-way, one-lane circle. This People Mover project, tendered by the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, had a firm fixed cost, according to the Boring Company website, of $47 million. Which, of course, means this $48.6 million project cost the Las Vegas Convention Center about $52.5 million, because when you get a $55 million contract like this, what's a 17% cost overrun when you're dealing with taxpayers' money, right? For winning that contract, the Boring Company had promised to deliver an autonomous, underground shuttle system capable of delivering 4,400 people per hour for 13 hours of peak traffic daily. That's not what was delivered. News reporters who covered this story in 2018, fawning over Musk's CGI promises, are now heavily invested in spinning Musk's failure into media hype. So they put on their happy face and really tried their best to make this look like something special. This is also a thrill ride. But there's no spinning this. It's a small tunnel, with regular Tesla cars in it. And as it turns out, not much else. Not even bathrooms. Of course, one of the questions we have to ask right off the bat, why would anybody build an entire tunnel transport system around a car manufacturer who was ranked second to last on the most recent annual consumer report? That alone seems to be a questionable decision. Ignoring those critiques, the mainstream media reporters shared the specs of the project. There are 62 cars in this system, to transport 4,400 people an hour down a roughly kilometer long, four meter wide, neon lit paved sewer pipe. Apparently, these reporters can recite numbers from a press release, but they really suck at math. We, on the other hand, are quite handy with a calculator, so here's how those numbers work out. The speed shown on this video of the Tesla going through the loop topped out at about 29 miles per hour, call it 45 kilometers, well short of the 155 mile per hour, 250 kilometer per hours promised at the time that the Boring Company secured this contract. And these are people driving in Tesla Model 3s, maybe a Model X, but definitely not the 18-person shuttle depicted in so many of the artist concepts renderings. Also, since Musk never developed the FSD software he's been promising since 2015, these cars still require a driver, so right away that digs deep into the number of packs per hour. Let's take a look at this system in its entirety. This video, posted on YouTube by the Las Vegas Sun, demonstrates a full lap of the loop. It starts off at the central station on the map, which, by the way, is the only station located underground. Our driver leaves their parking spot at 17 seconds of this video. 62 seconds later, it emerges into the sunlight of the above-ground south station and drives by the vacant parking stall. It doesn't stop. It takes 42 seconds to complete the roundabout and come back into the tunnel at 2 minutes flat, arriving back at the mid station at 3 minutes and 4 seconds. Again, it does not stop. It continues straight through and heads to the tunnel leading to the west station, emerging from the tunnel at 4.04, passing the drop off area at 4.14, then spinning around to head back to the central station and parking back in its original berth at 5 minutes and 50 seconds. This was a complete lap of the track without stops, without passengers and it took 5 minutes and 35 seconds. Let's say it takes people a minute to load up and another minute to leave the vehicle on arrival as new passengers are climbing into the car. That gives us about 7.5 minutes per round trip as an estimate. And as it turns out, we found that exact number on some of the project's related documents, especially in regards to fire code. The claim is this system can carry 4,400 people per hour and there are 62 cars. One of these cars can carry three, possibly four people, and do a lap every seven and a half minutes. Add it all up, and the max output on this system 
is 1,488 people per hour if there's three people per vehicle, 1,984 if they cram four people in a Model 3 with the driver. So that's well short of the 4,400 people an hour that was promised by Musk. In fact, that's actually the benchmark set out by the Las Vegas Convention Center when the tender was issued. Not only that the system must be able to carry that many people per hour, but also that the boring company will be fined heavily if it fails to do so. That's on top of not getting paid in the first place until they can pull off those numbers during testing. There are benchmark payments of $4.4 million for when the system hits 2,200 people per hour, 3,300 people per hour, and 4,400 people moved every hour. Right now, it seems impossible to even qualify for the lowest tier. The LVCVA gave TBC a bit of a break when they established the end contract, using 90% volume of 3960 instead of 4400. Quoting the article, for each large trade show that TBC fails to transport an average of 3960 packs per hour for 13 hours, it will have to pay the LVCVA $300,000 in damages. If the boring company keeps falling short, it will keep paying up to a maximum of $4.5 million, roughly equal to the final benchmark payment. So let's run the numbers again. They need to move 4,400 people per hour. That's 73 people per minute, 1.2 per second. The cars hold three people comfortably, plus the driver. So every 3.6 seconds, a car would have to be entering that tunnel. If a full loop takes five minutes and 35 seconds, as demonstrated, that's 335 seconds. Divided by 3.6, they could theoretically have 93 vehicles in motion at all times. However, there are reportedly only 62 cars in this system, so instead of every 3.6 seconds, this sequence of vehicles has to deliver passengers to the end destination every 2.4 seconds. And that's if all the vehicles in the loop are capable of driving all day long on a full charge. These numbers get completely thrown off as cars need to be pulled from the queue to recharge, or if they break down, catch a flat, or scrape the wall. The central station has only five parking stalls available in each direction, as seen in this actual footage. That means every vehicle in that station will have to cycle every 12 seconds. Complete station turnovers five times per minute. Unload, reload, and pull out in this amount of time. Constantly. There is no chance in hell that Musk's system can hit that cadence. Zero. And that's running perfectly. No delays, no accidents, no loss of power in a vehicle. Which brings up another complete failure in this design. One more thing while we're here that will be slowing down the rate of people being served is crosswalks. At the south station, at 1.36 of the video, there is a single, clearly marked crosswalk for the 4,400 people per hour expected to use this system. When there are people crossing this crosswalk, of course that's going to slow down the vehicles at that station, and with it being a single lane loop, it will clog up the entire system. They apparently forgot to install a crosswalk at the west station, which means that those people will likely be dodging traffic to get to their parking stalls in the adjacent parking lots and the hotels that are just across the parking lot from them. See, apparently safety in this system is not a primary concern. As you're driving down this claustrophobic tunnel, what do you see? Or rather, what do you not see? First, there is no bypass of the tunnel. If anything at all happens in any of the tunnels, the whole system gets stymied. As the full loop was recorded by the Las Vegas Sun, no other bypass tunnels were spotted. Now, let's say there's an accident. People need to get out of the car and walk to the next station. Is there even enough room in the tunnel to open the door and exit the vehicle? Second, where are the walkways to keep people out of danger from approaching vehicles when they're out of the car? Third, where are the emergency exits? Signs. Directional arrows. How about reflective tape? Nope on all counts. Keep driving. Look for any of the following. Emergency lights, emergency beacons, fire alarm pull stations. You won't spot any. Ventilation shafts. Nope. How about fire suppression systems? None of those either. In fact, the paperwork outlining this project very clearly states that this mass transport tunnel system has no fire sprinklers, smoke detectors, or fire detectors. They're not part of the contract. Have you ever seen a Tesla burn? When they ignite, they go up quickly. Huge fireballs that spew fire and toxic vapors, including hydrogen cyanide. This video shows how even a parked Model 3 can spontaneously erupt into a fireball, and once the batteries start burning, there is no putting them out. Some of these battery fires can burn for as long as 24 hours. Here's another video of an electric vehicle igniting while going through a tunnel. Look at how quickly it goes up, and the amount of toxic fumes that are filling the tunnel. 
Thankfully, this tunnel had proper ventilation which kept the smoke moving down the tunnel as fire crews attended the fire. Now take a look at the boring tunnels and how they're pretty much only accessible by the Teslas on the track. Can you get a fire truck down there to cool the walls and prevent collapse and put out the fire? How about a tow truck to clear a wreck? Not a chance. And in the case of a fire, a good section of this tunnel runs directly underneath the LVCC Central Hall. How much danger would a runaway cascading EV fire present to the structures above it, especially if the tunnel caved in? Did you see a fire hose or even a fire extinguisher station on that lap around the track in the tunnels? No, you didn't. There's one handheld extinguisher right here by the entrance, and that's it until you get to the next station. You can go ahead and check the video. Let us know if you spot something that we didn't. The vehicles going through this system were supposed to be AEVs that looked like this and carried 18 people. Again, what Musk delivered was Tesla cars that are not autonomous and still require drivers. Now the question nobody seems to have asked yet, who is paying those drivers? Musk or the LVCC who were told they were getting autonomous electric shuttles. Since this system will require professional drivers, they'll probably be looking at hiring cabbies. And here's what cabbies make in Las Vegas. The top earners make about $123,000 a year, about 60 bucks an hour. Let's take the average instead to keep it fair, 19 bucks an hour, and in return the LVCC would be using properly permitted, licensed, qualified livery drivers. The Loop will likely be operating 18 hours a day, 365 days a year, since Vegas never sleeps. There are 62 vehicles, all of which require a driver. If those drivers are getting paid the industry average of $19 per hour, the annual salary costs alone will top $7.7 .7 million per year just for drivers. Who's going to be paying that? Now it's all fine and dandy for the Musk fanboys to say this is Boring Company's first major project and it's being used as a proof of concept. Except it's not. The Las Vegas Convention Center didn't get the vehicles they were promised, the capacity they required in their tender, or a feasible, replicatable system. What it is, is proof that Musk and the Boring Company cannot deliver as promised, or on time, and as a result should not be allowed to bid on future projects due to a failure to deliver. All in all, the Las Vegas Convention Center would have been much better off installing these underground instead. They're suitable for pedestrians, for bikes, for handicapped people, and they would take less time than waiting for a three-person shuttle to take them one kilometer. And do you know why the Las Vegas Convention Center spent all this time and money and installed the system in the first place? A walk from one end to another normally takes 15 minutes. That's now turned into a one-minute ride. All of this to avoid a 15-minute walk in Vegas, where you might actually see some of the sites you went there to see in the first place. But the best ass-backwards part about this whole concept? Using electric vehicles in this system is supposed to be environmentally friendly. Green energy, right? Except all the power used in Las Vegas comes from nearby generating stations that create energy by burning natural gas. The Hoover Dam, located only 30 miles away, sends 95% of the energy it creates out of state. So all 62 of these cars are going to run on fossil fuels. And a final note, if you're online trying to find information about The Boring Company, you'll find that TheBoringCompany.com is a drilling company located in Vegas that has been around since 2006 and has no connection to Musk at all. So it turns out not even the name of Musk's company that invented the tunnel was as original as he would have everyone believe. Thanks for tuning into this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic, and a special thanks to Elon Musk for the hits that just keep on coming. This week alone, we had the Vegas Loop, the monkey that can play video games with its mind even when it's not looking at the game screen, and the claim that he currently possesses the technology required to create Jurassic Park for real. It must be April. Thank you for your continued support of this channel. Give the video a like, share it with your friends, and ring that notification bell so that you'll know when the Common Sense Skeptic returns. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can find us on Patreon at backslash the Common Sense Skeptic.